data and then the uh, the look and feel. Next up is of course now we have the option packs, but of course we want to show in the option packs just as this one. We actually want to show all of the options that are in these option packs. So you guessed it already. Let's go back to our documents here. I put an extra um, and in this table I'm actually gonna add an other table and an even a new table so I want to add a new table here um, yeah it can show the uh, the the edges of this table um, I want the headers so let's take let's take uh, let's make this one this color for instance let's say this is uh, option and price VAT exclusive I want to have this at the outer side okay and then what I actually want here is very cool the option name and the option price so again here I want this at the outside so now I have my option back um, and now I want to say I want to get all of the options linked to this option pack and all of the option packs linked to this car okay let's call it a car instead of a model so uh, car model so let's do this it's now saved okay let's go back to Salesforce and get some data okay let's take a look at the line items see so i have now in my documents my uh, my cars i have my packs and of course now i have my i want to see these uh, options now per pack in there and of course i also want to show let's say um, i'm going to take the net total price to show okay uh let's go back eh? let's go to uh, data sources we are on the data source for the option pack now i want to add another child data source to this one a new of type circle of course you could guess it already and i'm gonna call this academy um, options training one so it's of course a list of objects there are multiple possible okay save it go to this uh, item and we're going just going to use again the query the query builder sorry the circle builder to uh, to do this so we are on the options cool it's always the same thing i always want to go via the quote lines so i'm just going to again select quote lines here it's filtering one second okay um, my quote line select the object I'm going to select the record ID I always do that add field I'm going to select the required by okay I need to select uh, what kind of information do we want to show the option name and the option price so I'm going to take the net total price as we agreed and I'm going to to, 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 to uh, the product name okay uh, for some reason I always go to the follow the relationship and I'm going to take the name from the actual product not the name that's inside the uh, the quote line don't know why it's uh, just a habit so um, record ID equals my record ID so this is the ID of the quotes every quote line is linked to the quotes so okay let's add this one and again now I need to tell the system how these items are grouped which options belong to which option packs it's actually the same thing yeah? we know that this option belongs to this option pack so this option will have a required by field saying that it's linked to this option pack okay so if you want to see that let's take a look at the line items and you can see the uh, option uh, for instance this option here 
Okay, it has a required buy, and this required buy will say that it belongs to a certain option pack and the entertainment pack. And this required buy will say that it's actually linked to the car. Yeah, that's the my model of the car that it's linked to. So this is the relationship we have to tell the system to follow. So it's actually the exact same thing as before. We want to select the grouping fields that's on, on, the, uh, uh, on the documents. So this is the required buy. That's uh, N which the required buy has to be equal to which field of the parent that's the record id of course so settings are done we can go to review everything is in, filled in here automatically save it we are done we can use this data source now so next up same thing here let's go to select the uh, the documents that we just uh, edited okay because every time i have to upload it because i make changes to it so now i want to tell the system to repeat this row so first i have to identify the row okay um so on this table uh, under this table i need to add now table row Okay, it's not going to be of type single, it's going to be of type table row. Not use this, not, oh, again, the same error, sorry for that. Okay, I need to add, of course, the child one here. You can check this, everything is now correct. It's a currency, there is an ID field, all of the settings are done. You can see this um, this relationship of these uh, doc, uh, sorry, data sources right here. So let's go back and add this as table row option name it's of type table row uh, we want to use the options uh, data source merge field is option name okay so a little bit of the same and now we want to use this option name use it as a single say that it has to go from the parent data source so the parent data source is the option that i'm currently in because i'm looping through these options right now uh, i want to use the product name merge fields so which is where do i have to uh, fill in this uh, this uh, name of this product that's of course over here cool let that's done um, what else is there? Just gonna put a little bit down uh, on the option price. Hold on, that's not what I wanted to do. So option price, let's also copy this one, add it here. It's a single, I'm looping through my options. So I'm gonna take the that data source, uh, the net total. Yes, I want it. Uh, um, uh, I want it formatted as a currency. Okay, and if you're wondering how it will format it, it's with this via the settings of the user in Salesforce or via the settings of your customer. If your customer has um, a field that indicates which uh, which country, uh, which language he speaks, then this can be used as uh, to format this uh, this currency. Okay, coolness. So just gonna make a couple of changes just to make it look better. So I'm going to say that I need some double spacing between the tables. So we just leave some more room between the tables. I didn't think that was very nice. Okay, and I'm going to upload my document again. I added some extra spacing in there. So cool. Yeah, everything checks out. So uh, when I click the save to server button, there's a complete validation done. Uh, a lot of checks to make sure everything is perfectly okay. So uh, when this says green, then I know it's gonna work. Cool. My quote, click the button again. Wait a second. Ah, document is already there. So, and now, for some reason, the options are not there. So, okay, we have to investigate. But you already saw that the second model nicely comes to the second page because it doesn't fit to one page. Let me take a look what I've done wrong to uh, not select the, um, the correct, uh, probably an issue with the data source. Okay, I said where the ID is the record ID, which is of course incorrect. Huh? Everybody knows that 
the ID is not the record ID, but it's actually the quote. And I didn't select that field yet, so I need to select the quote as well. Add this field. Okay, now I can go to the filters. The quote field, the operator record ID. Add the filter. Okay, save the query. And let's do this again. That's how easy you can change these kind of things. Test it again and I'm pretty sure it will all map out great now. So I have my car, I have my uh, uh, information, I have my option packs, all my options now. So this is actually all of my data coming from our, uh, uh, our CPQ. This is exactly the same kind of view that I had on my CPQ edit lines. And this is a structure that I want to bring to my customers. Cool.